There are a few basic ways in which balls move around the court in gate ball. The simplest way that a ball moves around the court is a single ball stroke. It's when you, the player of your own ball, strikes your ball towards a line or another object. This action involves one ball, therefore it's called a single ball stroke. And it's one of the ways in which the ball can move in gate ball. One of the key features of playing a game of gate ball is called continuous play. And there are a few ways you can gain the right for continuous play. In order to gain the right for continuous play, we either need to successfully complete a spark or go through the next gate in order for our respective ball. This will gain us one extra stroke. The way that we gain a spark in order to gain the right for continuous play is through touching another ball. We touch another ball by our ball making contact with another ball on the field. In this case, I'll strike ball eight, my ball as indicated by my player bib, to touch ball nine. My eight ball just touched the nine ball. This is called a touch and will be indicated by the referee. The right to spark is gained by our ball touching another ball and all the balls stopping as in balls. This is achieved thus. My eight ball has made contact and touched the nine ball. I now, after the two balls have stopped as in balls, are permitted to pick up the nine ball and spark it. We begin the actions on sparking as they're referred to by picking up the nine ball or the other ball that we touched, not our own ball. We then place our foot on top of our own ball. We place the nine ball underneath our foot and in contact with our ball, in this case, the eight ball. We then strike our ball, driving the nine ball away, but the eight ball remains exactly where it stopped. It is important to note that when conducting a spark, you gain the right to a continuous stroke if you complete it successfully. But what does completing a spark successfully mean? It means that while conducting the spark, your ball does not leave from the bottom of your foot. If I was conducting a spark, and while conducting it with both balls under my foot, and my ball came free from under my foot, that would be considered a sparking foul, and it would be the end of my turn, and my ball would become an out ball. Likewise, if the balls are set under the foot incorrectly, or if you set the balls on the ground by placing the nine ball next to the eight ball, then your foot on top of them, this would also be a foul, resulting in you not gaining a continuous stroke, as you only gain a continuous stroke and continuous play if you complete a spark successfully. The last way that you can gain continuous play in the form of continuous strokes is by going through the next gate in order. In this situation, ball eight is for gate three. Therefore, passing through this gate will gain me one continuous stroke. The most important thing to remember while conducting all of these strokes is that gate ball is a timed game and each player from the moment their number is called by the referee has only 10 seconds to stroke his or her ball. It is important to remember this as it is a foul if you do not stroke your own ball within that time. You must make up your decision quickly and listen to what your captain or team manager is telling you so that you can conduct your work as quickly and as efficiently as possible as to not be fouled and to lose your right to stroke your ball. To ensure that referees are able to arrest moving balls whilst they are moving, crossing the inner field into the outer field, we must ensure that we indicate to the referee where we wish to spark. This is important even on small sparks to ensure that the game flows correctly. I will now touch ball nine and I will clearly indicate to the referee where I intend to spark the ball. I've completed a successful touch. I pick up the other ball, which is ball nine. I place my foot on ball eight in preparation to spark. 
I set ball nine under my foot. And then I indicate with a pointed finger as to where I intend to spark ball nine. This allows the referees to gain traction towards that area and be able to have enough time to get there. I now have the right to a continuous stroke. I'm going to attempt to go through gate three. After passing through gate three, I now have a further continuous stroke as ball eight was for gate three. What happens when we touch multiple balls in the same stroke? We can see here that I've stroked my eight ball and I've touched ball five and ball 10. Well, which one do I spark first? The rules of gate ball say that we are allowed to spark the balls in any order in most circumstances. There are a few exceptions, but we won't go into detail with them here. So I get to pick either the five ball or the 10 ball and I get to spark it. I'll choose the five ball first. I'll indicate to the referee that I intend to spark it out on that far boundary before proceeding to spark the ball. I then, without stroking my own ball, must now proceed to spark the 10 ball. I pick up the 10 ball and I intend to spark it. This ball's going for the gate over there, so I'll spark it over there. I am now entitled to one continuous stroke. It is important to note that when making a double touch in this situation, these continuous strokes do not compound. So you only get one continuous stroke even though you touch and spark two balls successfully. We've discussed what happens when you make a successful touch. And one of the key rules is that all the balls in the situation have to remain as in balls once they've stopped moving. But there is an exception to this rule, and that's in relation to multiple touches. My ball is this one here, ball eight. You can see I'm wearing the number bib. I've got two balls in front of me, which I haven't touched this turn. That means I'm allowed to create a touch with them, or at least attempt to. But what happens if the following situation occurs? I've made a successful touch with ball 10 but not with ball five, because ball five has become an out ball. Well, does my turn end? No, ball five is measured in using the standard 10 centimeter method where it went out. I am now entitled to spark ball 10 because ball 10 finishes an in ball. This is one of the few situations in which, although a multiple touch is occurring, you are still permitted to have the right to a spark. I'm then permitted one further continuous stroke as a result of the successful spark on ball 10.